Okay, here we go. Uh, a little bit then about lab number two. And what to say about that? I mean, it, it's something you have to deal with um, in astronomy, uh, especially, even though it's sort of an everyday thing. It's something you're used to. I mean, this idea that, and this is going to sound kind of ridiculous, the further something is away from you, the smaller it looks. And the bigger it is, the bigger it looks. And that, that sounds just sort of like, well, duh. But, but in astronomy, you run into that problem where you've got that objects in that are different sizes, they're different distances away from you. And being able to talk about that, how big that object then appears in the sky or how far apart two objects then um, are in the sky. And this idea then of, of talking about then the size of something on our sky or how far two things are apart on our sky. How do you, how do you even do that? And one thing is you could do like in this picture here where you just go, ah, you know, you just go up and you, you try and measure it with a rule or a measuring tape or something like that. And that really doesn't make any sense because clearly, um, you know, that's that that's just not a good way to do it. Maybe the better way to do it, though, is, is to talk about the size of an object. Uh, how big it appears in the sky, um, maybe maybe in terms of an angle or this idea that I can go out and I can talk about, you know, here's the horizon and the angle then between the horizon and straight up my zenith. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that's a right angle. That's 90 degrees. And maybe I don't go all the way up. Maybe I stop halfway. Oh, that's 45 degrees. Or maybe I only go a third of the way up. Oh, that's 30 degrees. Or thinking about then measuring the sizes of things in the sky then just in terms of angles. And that's actually what astronomers do. And you'll, you'll run into this uh, a fair bit then in the class when we talk about, you know, the, the apparent sizes of objects on the sky, it just doesn't make sense to go, oh yeah, that's about three inches. No, no, no. We talk about the sizes or the separations between two objects in the sky, then uh, we measure them uh, basically then in terms of angles. And so you've got then the full whole sky, you know, all the way around that um, 360 degrees. You know that. That's a circle, 360 degrees. And oh, how you never, you can never know too much about these things, right? It comes from the Babylonians then, and the were about 360 degrees in the year, and they used a base space 60 number system. And anyway, so that's where that all comes from. But the, the idea, you've got 360 degrees in a circle. And so, well, you can take each of those degrees and break it up into smaller and smaller units. But if you look at the moon, then the size of the moon in the sky, the angle from the top of the moon to the bottom of the moon, then, well, that's about half a degree. And so, you know, thinking about the size of the moon, that it's about half a degree uh, in, in the sky. And um, well, that, that makes sense, though, how things appear to us and how they appear in the sky. Um, you know, obviously, the further away something is, the smaller it's going to look to us. So so something then that's further away, so I'm, I'm doing it sort of backwards here. That's the example here, B, where we have this ball, and the further away I move the ball, um, the, the, the smaller the ball then appears to me. Or you could also talk about how big something appears in terms of its true size, where if I've got something small and up close, it may actually look about the same size, at least in terms of angles, that, um, as a larger object then that's smaller or, or further away then. So the bigger the object then, the bigger it appears, the closer the object, the bigger it appears, and vice versa. The further away it is then, uh, the smaller that object appears. And if you think about it then, um, this actually makes some sort of sense. And, and you can talk then about the angular size of an object, and, and you can see there's an equation on the bottom here. Well, maybe let's think about it for a second then. The angular size of an object, how big it appears to me when I'm looking at it, and I'm going to measure it in terms of this angle. Well, the bigger that object is then, um, the bigger it's going to look to me. And so, well, well, that's just directly proportional. If I look at one object then, and I've got another object right next to it, and that other object then is two times bigger, well, it's going to appear, you know, in, in terms of an angle, it's going to appear two times bigger if it is two times bigger. And it's, it's just a proportionality here. And so this idea, oh, it's a proportionality. If I were to express that then, you know, mathematically, I'd say the angular size then is proportional to the true size of the object. The other thing to think about, though, is the distance, where the further away the object is, the smaller it's going to look to you. 
And that, that's, we talk about that then as an inverse relationship or an inverse proportion. If I move something two times further away, it turns out it's going to look to me two times smaller. If I move it 10 times further away, it's going to look to me like it's 10 times smaller. Its angular size will be 10 times smaller. That's a reverse or an inverse relationship. And I express that mathematically, not as a, a, a proportionality, but I, I usually do that as one over something. Like one over two is basically bigger than one over three, which is bigger than one over four, which is bigger than one over 10. So, you know, thinking about one over four and one over 10, the bigger the number is on the bottom, the smaller the total quantity is. And so one quarter then is definitely bigger than one tenth, even though that four is smaller than the 10, it's on the bottom. So, so it's an inverse relationship. They're reversed. The, the bigger the thing on the bottom is, the smaller the whole quantity is. And so I can think about expressing that mathematically, though, which is what's up with this equation here, where the angular size of an object, then, how big it appears to me, then it's proportional to t here, then the true size of the object. A here is the angular size of the object. T here is the true size of the object. Well, the bigger this number t is, well, it's a direct linear relationship. It's a direct relationship to the angular size. The bigger t is, the bigger the angular size is. And likewise, so they, you know, not quite likewise, in the inverse of that. The, the, the further away it is, the bigger the distance to the object, and this big D down here, the bigger the distance that, well, I'm dividing by a bigger and bigger number, that's going to make the result, the final answer then, smaller and smaller and smaller. It's an inverse relationship. Well, yeah, so that, that makes sense. That's what happens then as an object is further and further and further away. It's going to appear to be, to be smaller and smaller and smaller. So yeah, that distance then, it has to go on the bottom in order for the size to get smaller as the distance gets bigger. And welcome to math, then, and welcome to you know, our, our, one of our first expressions then, of the relationships between these two quantities, how big something appears to us to be, maybe measured in terms of an angle. Well, the bigger it physically is, the bigger it appears, and the further away it is, the bigger this D is, and the smaller it appears. And this is sort of you know, one of our first equations. And the 57.3 here, then, um, is, the, is sort of a conversion factor that makes this all work. And what we're using here then, the units on the angle that we're going to be using here in lab then, is degrees. And this will be a little bit confusing because the book and in the lecture part then, we're using arc seconds. And so instead of 57.3 here then, you have 206, 265. But it's just a constant then of proportionality just to make the units work out right. Um, if you wanna, if you wanna get all nerdy, we can talk about that. Maybe you know, if you wanna come to the office hours or something. This is basically then the the number of degrees in a radian. Remembering that they're two pi uh, radians in a circle. If you remember trigonometry, then two pi radians equals 360 degrees. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, they're 57.3 degrees in, in a radian. Just like in class, those 206, 265. Then that's the number of arc seconds in a radian. Doesn't matter. Any sort of uh, test or something like that, quiz, something like that, uh, we'll give you this equation. So don't be worried about remembering that number. The idea, though, the thing that I want, you know, to sort of walk out, you, you to walk away with, though, is the idea that the bigger it is, uh, the bigger it appears, the further away it is, the smaller it appears. How how hard um, can that be? And so um, we can take that equation and we can just basically do algebra. We can solve it for the true size of an object. So if I know how big an object then appears in the sky and I know how far away it is, I can rearrange that equation to figure out the true size of the object. Or if I know the true size of the object then and how big it appears to me, I can then also use that then to find the distance to the object. So really with this equation, if I know any two of the quantities then I can use it to figure out the third. If I know the distance and the true size, I can figure out the angular size. If I know the angular size and the distance then I can figure out the true size. If I know the angular size and the true size, I can figure out the distance. And so that basically then um, is what this lab is about then, working with these equations. And so so here's just sort of a really simple example working with the equation, oh, these equations. And, and the sun appears then basically about a half a degree in the sky. Boy, that's about the same size as the moon appears. I wonder what happens if the moon gets in front of the sun and it's almost exactly and it's almost exactly the same size. I'm just previewing eclipses for you. Um, but I, and it's just a 
an absolute fluke that right now the sun and the moon then appear to be the same size in our sky. And so we get these wonderful eclipses, but they're both about half a degree. And so the sun appears to be about half a degree in our sky. Well, if, if we know the sun is also 152 million kilometers away, what does that tell you about the diameter of the sun? And this is one of these things where you go, all right, well, I know the angular size. I know the distance to the sun. I can use that then to figure out the true size of the sun. And you just fire up that equation. It's basically just plug and chug the angular size in degrees times the distance in kilometers then divided by our conversion factor. 57.3 then uh, gives us a value then of about 1.3 uh, million kilometers then for the, the diameter, the size of the sun. And the only thing I'll notice here that I think I forgot to mention is that the distance and the true size, then the units have to be the same for that. So if you measure the distance then in feet, the true size will be in feet. If you measure the distance in light years, the true size will be in light years. The units then just have to be the same then for this to work out. And so for this lab, um, unfortunately, we're sort of limited here with the sorts of things you can go out and look at. Um, we're not going to try and have you measure then the angular size of Jupiter or the angular size of the Andromeda galaxy or something like that. Um, we'll do something a fair bit more pedantic and have you measure then um, the angular size, the apparent size then of um, stuff on your door. And uh, we're expecting you to sort of use uh, the, you know, how do we want to say it then, an entry door to, to your house or your apartment or, or wherever you're staying then. And, and I don't know how much you want to get into construction stuff, but those sorts of doors then typically have three hinges on them. Um, if your door then, the only door you have access to only has two hinges on it, um, just take a piece of tape or something and then sort of stick it halfway between the, the two hinges and, and call that the third hinge. But anyways, what we're going to have you do then is basically measure the size of the distance then from the, the top of the door to the doorknob and then measure then the width of the door and then measure then the distance between uh, the, the two top hinges then on the door. And those will be then the three measurements you make. And you're going to start off then by measuring the angular size then uh, of those three features on your door and from a distance then of three meters and then a distance then of six meters. And, and gosh, how would you do that then? Uh, how do you measure the angular size? And it turns out your hand is generally pretty good at ballparking, uh, sort of a, a measuring tool for ballparking them the sizes of objects. If you go out and you have something and you're trying to measure its angular size, and basically you take it and you hold your pinky at arm's length, well, the width of your pinky is about a degree as you're looking at it then um, for our, from arm's length. And, and yeah, it's not super accurate, but hey, you know, so it's what you got. And so you can look at that, and if you look then at the distance on your door then, and it's about the width of your pinky uh, held at arm's length then, it's about a degree. Or um, you can just hold up um, your three fingers here then and look at the width of your three fingers then at arm's length then, that's about five degrees. Or just holding up your fist then at arm's length, the width of your fist, fist then is about 10 degrees. You could do sort of the, you know, the, the hook and horns Texas thing then. And from your pinky to your, I think it's your index finger. I can never remember the names of your fingers, um, except for the index finger. Um, but it, sorry, the, the pinky. Um, so I, I something like that. Basically, this then is 15 degrees. Or if you do pinky to thumb, something like this, then this separation is about 25 degrees. And so do this while nobody's watching. But basically, you know, just walk, uh, go to your door then, stand about three, three meters away then, and use your hand to estimate the angular separation between the hinges on your door or the distance in between the top of the door and the doorknob or the width of your door, something like that. And it's not going to be exactly one, five, or 10 degrees. You're going to have to sort of interpolate. You go, oh, that's about twice the size of my pinky as it held at arm's length. And so it's probably about two degrees or it's three times the size of my pinky. Well, it's about three degrees then. Do the best you can, though, uh, to make these measurements and using your hands and um, to, to sort of, you know, thinking about, oh, yeah, that's five degrees. Using your hands and your fingers and to estimate the angular sizes then, um, of these features on your door from three and six meters. And this lab then 
It's supposed to be done in meters and degrees. And I'm thinking not everybody has a meter stick at home, which is fine because here are the conversion factors then to go from inches to meters. So one inch is 0.0254 uh, meters. So if I measure something then, you know, that's, that's 10 inches, um, well, gosh, I can use that then to convert then uh, uh, that distance to meters. So to go from, from inches to meters, just multiply by 0.0254. You remember that from the last lab, then how to convert. And one foot then is about a third of a meter. So to go from feet to meters and multiply by 0.3084. And, and, and basically they'll convert everything up to meters then when doing this lab and make all your measurements then uh, in terms of angles then um, in degrees. And again, you know, you know how to do these conversions then. And so um, just really quick, uh, let's just go through and look at the lab. There we go. So here's the lab. It's online. It's a fillable PDF form where you can just go in and type in your name. Oop, ah. And there you go. You can type in your name. All right. It's not the best alignment uh, with, the, with the text boxes, but um, but you know, just go through and, and basically you can go through and there are these, you know, you can enter then your numbers. And there we go. Um, and enter your numbers in. And in the end, then just save the PDF file. You're going to save the PDF file then and upload it to Azure. And I will remind people then that you do want to use Adobe Acrobat then to do this. And again, I know for Mac users like me, it's really tempting just to fire up the preview app and go, but it does mess up these forms and you'll get in trouble then um, if you don't use Acrobat, uh, Adobe Acrobat then to fill out these forms. But basically here's the idea. Here's your door. You make your first measurement then at this distance. Estimate it then that angular distance, then the, the width of the door, the distance in between the two top hinges, and estimate those angular distances and do it from a distance end of three meters, which is about nine feet, and a distance end of six meters, which is about 18 feet. And if you can't get 18 feet away from your door, do the best you can. And you know, just let me know, send me a note or something when you turn in the lab, then that you know this is as far away as you could actually get from your door. But basically, then make those measurements the angular sizes of those three parts of your door as they appear to you then from these two different distances. And as you'd expect, or at least you'd hope then, well, yeah, the, the, from the further distance away from the door, they should look smaller or their angular sizes then uh, will be smaller. And you got a question to answer about that. The next thing we'll have you do then is calculate, well, um, yeah, as I was further away, they got smaller, well, what's the percentage change in the size? And you do that then by taking the new value, you subtract the, the old value or take the value at six meters, subtract the value at, at three meters and divide by that original value, multiply 100 by 100 then, and that's the, the percent change. How much did the measurement change by? And then basically tell me then, what was the percent change in the measurements going from three to six meters then away from the door for these the apparent angular sizes and um, of these three features on the door. And there's some questions about that. And so that's the first part of the lab. The second part of the lab is sort of reverse engineering this, where you just go, okay, um, I know I was six meters away from the door. I know how big the width of the door, just as an example, then the, the, the width of the door, then I know how big that appeared to me in degrees. Oh, wait a minute, though. If I know uh, how far away I am, this big D here, if I know how big the door actually you know, appeared in degrees, uh, if I know the, the, the apparent uh, angular size in degrees, then, well, I know A and I know D. I can multiply them together. I can divide them then by 57.3, and I can get then the actual size of the door um, as I saw it then in meters. And so I can do that then to calculate then the actual size of the door. And so you'll do that then for the three door features. You'll calculate then how big uh, they must be in order to appear as big as they, they do to you then at the distance you're at then. And then you can go measure them and then compare then how big you calculated Know, the width of the door to be to the actual width of the door, uh, the door, and you can talk about then the difference between the two and thinking about then, you know, is that consistent? Is this making sense? Um, and then finally, the last thing to do then is okay, we've talked about everything, we've talked about using the apparent size and the distance then. Uh, 
to, to figure out the true size. Um, we, well, wait, one other thing you can do though is if you know the true size and you know the apparent size, you can also then use this equation way up here uh, to figure out the distance. So if I know the true size, I know how big it appears then. Well, I can take 57.3 times the true size divided then by the apparent, you know, the angular size. Then, and I can use that to calculate how far away I am from the object or how far the object is away from me. That's the last part of the lab is somewhere between the three and six meters that just put a piece of tape or something, stand there, measure the apparent sizes from the, those new distances, from that, that new distance and measure that apparent size, the angular size. Um, you know the true size of those features and you can use that then to figure out how far away you are uh, from the door when you're making those measurements using this, this equation three here. And that's the last part of the lab then is to pick some arbitrary, oh, hold on, I gotta find where I am, to pick some arbitrary distance, there we go, um, and measure the size from that arbitrary distance of the three features, calculate that distance, and then go and actually measure the distance and see how well you did uh, using this. How close did you come then to the actual distance? And then again, there's some questions to answer about this um, that shouldn't be too much of a stretch, shouldn't be too much of a problem. Um, so that's the lab though. It should hopefully be pretty straightforward. It, as simple as it sounds though, it does take a little while to make all these measurements and to do these calculations and stuff. So don't wait till the last minute to do this. Um, but it is due then Monday at 11.59 p.m. Um, and so you got all weekend to do it. Um, and you know, give it a try. And if you have questions or anything, um, just let me know. And, uh, and good luck and have fun.